It is severe weather prepared this week in Kansas, and this year marks 25 years since the F4 tornado that hit my hometown of Hayesville. And what can we learn from it about being ready and strengthening our homes? Chief Meteorologist Lisa Teachman joins us now with that. And an ill wind can drastically change your life in a split second. You never want to think that it could happen to you, but in Hayesville, it did. Also my hometown, struck twice by tornadoes in less than 10 years. The first in 1991, the second in 1999. All tornadoes leave a mark. Hayesvillians are resilient, rising from the ashes twice. We were watching tornado after tornado develop. One of those tornadoes 25 years ago hit Hayesville head on. Some days it seems like it was yesterday, and then other days it seems like it was somebody else's life. It was a narrower track, but it certainly had, a, a, you know, intense, it was a mean tornado. The tornado developed near Wellington and tracked north into Hayesville and parts of Wichita. I got a call from the dispatcher at the police department said, oh, Mr. Mayor, the total station's gone. It was difficult driving around town that night. Power outages left the community dark. Power poles were down. Trees torn up, gas lines hissing. Debris and twisted sheet metal from Norland Plastics was ground zero near Hayesville's main intersection. Hundreds of homes, several businesses, and a handful of churches were damaged or destroyed. The next day, we uh, started plotting, you know, block by block, looking at the, at the destruction and seeing what kind of um, rating it was going to get. Tim Marshall is an engineer and meteorologist who helped determine the strength of the tornado. It was classified as an F4 with winds estimated between 207 to 260 miles per hour. Marshall says since that day, building codes have remained essentially unchanged. Building codes are a minimum to begin with. So houses are, are built pretty much uh, like they were years ago, if anything, they're not as strong. He says one thing you can do is strengthen your garage doors. He says when wind is trapped inside a garage weakened by flying debris, the pressure can build, lifting the roof off and collapsing walls. We found that almost half of the initial failures was that garage door. And if you have an attached garage, which a lot of people do on their, on their house, but when that door blows in, now it pressurizes the inside and that wind wants to get out. If you're building a new home, it's essential to make sure your framing is properly anchored, something he says was not the case in some homes he surveyed and in others that were rebuilt. They were just putting the bolts in, no washers and nuts. That's not gonna do anything. I mean, come on, the house is not anchored then. Today, the town looks much different than it did before the storm. A war memorial now stands with a new library in its historic district. None of this would be here if it had not been for the tornado. As bad as things are and you look at them and go, we'll never recover, there is a recovery, like, like a phoenix. You know, you kind of rise up out of the ashes. It is the heart of the people that makes a town and helps it come back from such a disaster. Tim Marshall, along with several other scientists and researchers, are working on a new enhanced Fujita scale. There are thousands of pages of documentation to go through to narrow the focus. The scale from EF0 to EF5 will remain, but wind speeds will come down. In addition, this will become a standard to be used all across the board for storm surveys in the future.